for anyone who is not able to, to attend, we are gonna be able to send this out via a YouTube link. Um, so for anyone who just joined, Tom's gonna to get started. If you do have questions as we go, put your questions in the group chat. We will have a little bit of time at the end to have questions and answers. And really our purpose here is just to begin a conversation um, given the unprecedented time that we're in. I have children, this is a challenge for, for me, um, managing work and my kids. And I know it's a challenge for many of us. So this is just an opportunity to get maybe some advice that you might implement. Some things might work, some things might not. We're just trying to provide support as we can. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Tom. All right, thanks. Thanks everyone for, for joining. I hope you're doing okay. Um, so what I thought I would do um, in terms of this presentation, the way I structured it is I reached out to a, um, a few of my friends and colleagues who have children, some of whom who don't, just to get a sense of you know, what's working, what's been challenging, maybe even what's been a positive thing that's come out of this. Um, and I sort of collated those into sections. So what I'll do is go through each of those. And what I really wanted to do was link it to specific skills or strategies that you could use based on the feedback that I got. So I will get to that, but I hope you can indulge me. I think it's important that we all take a minute or two for ourselves and maybe we can all start with a brief mindfulness activity. So I'll explain what that is. If you have a pen and paper handy, um, now's the time to grab it um, if you're choosing to participate, okay? Um, I'll get to the next slide. Okay. Um, so I think a lot, of, a lot of things that we need right now are really being compassionate to ourselves um, and taking time for ourselves because um, this is challenging. We tend to spread our resources out to those around us and forget to maybe take care of our own selves. So I thought we would take um, five minutes to just do like a simple um, self-compassion activity you know, with any mindfulness activity, the goal is to really throw yourself into it, um, focus. If you feel like your mind is drifting, bringing yourself back. Um, and I gave you some prompts for this. So you could start by validating your current feelings. You know, how are you feeling? And you can just jot these things down. The whole idea is just to be reflective. Um, tell yourself some positive affirmations, like I can get through this. Um, list three things that you like about yourself. And then what I'd like you to do before you start is maybe take a quick moment to observe um, your mood now, and then we'll have a, a short chat. You can write in the chats how you're maybe feeling afterwards. All right, so uh, grab a pe paper, pencil, pen, and we'll do this for about five minutes. Um, I'm going to turn my video off for a second, and then, um, or no, I don't think I can, but I'll, I'll time it and I'll bring us all back in four or five minutes.
All right, let me just take like another minute to finish out any thoughts you have. All right. <clears throat> so maybe you could, um, you know, if you want, and you, you did the activity and you'd like, just share any thoughts you had um, in the chat. I can't see it right now, but we can maybe go back um, and look at that. You know, we do this with the students or even in our department meetings, we always have a, a, a little bit of a debrief, just, you know, what did you observe about yourself? Did you notice any thoughts intruding? Were you able to to let them pass. Um, and um, I guess I can pull up the chat, I'll figure that out. But, um, you know, just any stray observations, did you, like that last question, did your mood change? Do you feel a little bit lifted? Um, so I hope you took advantage of that. Thanks. Um, all right, so I know this is not, you know, we this DBT lingo has been thrown around a lot and this is certainly not a presentation on that. You can, you know, sign up for the five day intensive course and, and still not kind of really understand it deeply, but um, you don't really need to understand the, the philosophical part of it. There are concrete skills in the areas of mindfulness, distress tolerance, emotion regulation, and in interpersonal effectiveness. So, and it's a handy structure because when you have a question from a parent or you have a situation, there's usually a skill or two that fits in from one of those categories. So just a quick overview, it started um, in a very clinical setting, working with people who are very, very um, dysregulated emotionally. Um, it's since moved into the schools where it's become far less clinical, much more skill-based. It really lends itself to a school setting because it's um, a curriculum. And then more and more, it just applies to life so people are finding it very helpful parents who go through the, the um, treatment with their with their kids come out with skills um, so it's just a it's a nice framework and again we're not going to go into to detail but i wanted to just give a little framing on that as we go forward and if you have any questions or you want to learn more about this i'm happy to um chat and give you resources all right so i started um reaching out to my my colleagues and friends like i said and um, ask them what's been working, right? Because that's always a nice place to start. So what's been working? Um, and uh, this probably relates to a lot of you or resonates with a lot of you. Um, the feedback I got back was just a lot of routine, 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 right? So go to sleep, get up at the same time, shower, get dressed as if you were going to school. Um, that's what students are, some of the students have been doing actually that I heard from, which I was surprised by. Um, you definitely want to schedule blocks of time using timers as needed for, for everything because our days are so unstructured now. So for eating, for when you're going to go out for leisure or exercise, for when you're going to do schoolwork, you know, plug in calls with your friends, et cetera. And I just wanted to make that last point that students with executive functioning difficulties really could benefit from this um, structure provided them. Can I, I'm just going to make a comment here, Tom, yeah. which is on Thursday afternoon at 3.30, the counselors right. are going to be running a session on time management. Perfect. So if you're struggling with that routine, um, that would be something to attend. And we will record that as well and share it. Perfect. Thanks for that. Um, so how does this relate to some of the DBT strategies? Um, so there are a few. One is called uh, accumulating positives, which is just the idea of um, it goes along with building mastery. It's just the idea of setting small goals for yourself. So going back to that, you know, from 
from now until now or then I'm going to do X, Y, and Z and building in very um, achievable goals to help you start feeling positive and like you're working towards something better. Um, that helps with emotion regulation and distress tolerance. Um, and I find it helpful to just um, think of it almost as like a building checklist for yourself. It's, it's all that same idea of structure, but making things achievable and breaking them down to their smallest parts so that you know that you can accomplish that. Um, and then there's an acronym within the framework, uh, please, I'm not gonna go through all the letters, but that's just the general idea that um, taking care of your physical self is really, a, goes a long way in helping you maintain that emotion regulation piece. So exercising, eating well, sleeping well, um, along those lines. So that's important. Um, one, this doesn't necessarily fit right here, but one quote I, I really liked and one strategy that um, I found, you know, um, I liked it. Um, one mom says she's giving her daughter special privileges she wouldn't normally have so that she would develop positive memories associated with this phase of time. So I, I like that strategy. Um, she's actually a parent I know well and normally wouldn't do such a thing, but um, I like that, you know, her idea of like reframing this to be, you know, a unique situation rather than a dire situation or a, or a, a bad situation. Uh, for another one, um, quote that I got from, uh, this was a friend of mine in Westchester, he said that he's using this abnormal situation uh, to offer an opportunity to forge resiliency in his daughter. Um, he hopes that she can bring some of these coping skills that she's developing now because of the environment and the situation with her to college and beyond. So I thought that was great. And I linked it to um, a skill called making meaning. So it's essentially um, trying to find something positive from a negative situation and flipping it, it's on its head. So instead of focusing on all the negatives, what's coming out of this that could be positive? Um, it's, you know, I try to do that or teach that with any sort of negative situation. Um, the example I used, in, or one example a parent used for me in the parent group was that, you know, they had a relative pass away and it was tragic, but it brought the family together. There were some relationships that needed some repair. So she was able to focus on, on the positives of that. So making meaning in a situation that's negative is one way of reframing um, the way you look at it and the way you feel. A lot of DBT skills are about changing the way you think about the situation. Um, another parent said, I'm resisting the urge to over-program I'm allowing my son and myself to take compassionate breaks from schoolwork and each other during the day. So I thought that was nice. And I liked how she phrased it, um, you know, compassionate breaks from each other as well. I think we all need that, that self-care time. So I linked this to, um, you know, just generally avoiding judgment. I know a lot of us are thinking, I should be doing that, I should be doing this, and trying to take that piece away from it and setting, again, manageable goals, um, expectations should shift a little bit and you should try to avoid, should, um, try to avoid judging yourself for maybe not getting something done or maybe you had a conversation with your son or daughter that got a little heated and you wish it didn't go that way. Avoid judgment. Everyone's struggling with this. It's okay. So then I uh, asked what have been some of the challenges and I'm sure a lot of you can, will relate to these. So obviously the parent challenges, managing their own work and student schoolwork, keeping students focused, um, enforcing physical distancing from, with their kids and their kids' friends, and just generally being patient. Um, I know that's not easy to do in a stressful time like this. Um, so again, going back to the idea of not judging yourself if you lose patience, but um, try to focus on that and be mindful of that. So some of these quotes, trying to do my job and entertain and teach my kids. Uh, the boundarylessness is a challenge um, and it's difficult to keep my kids away from others on our, on our walks. So those are, I kind of just, um, I think are relatable for a lot of people. And I think it ties back to the idea of structure, especially that boundaryless challenge comment, the structure and the, um, 
the day uh, plan for your day so that you feel like there is momentum and you're not just repeating the same thing over and over again. I'm having personally a bit of a groundhog day moment and that's come up before. So uh, student challenges, obviously connecting with friends, social media I'm sure helps, but um, not being able to physically connect uh, impact on social lives. And a lot of students actually said that they miss their teachers and they miss being, a lot of people, a lot of kids said they just miss being in school. I really miss being able to see my teachers. I miss being uh, able to hang out with my, my friends. So those are, and again, accumulating positive experiences. So the idea of really programming, especially with the social piece, programming, you know, Facebook or FaceTime, uh, meeting with your friends. Um, a lot of my friends have been doing like happy hour on Friday night. Um, and just staying in touch with the people we would normally see and keeping that social connectedness because that's that's an important piece in all of this and then i asked um, what are your biggest concerns about the near future um, and again a lot were pretty expected what will summer look like i'm afraid me or someone in my family will get sick just not knowing when it will end and again, just how open-ended and, and how much of an unknown this all is. I think that's, you know, unlike, I hate to compare it to other events, but unlike other events or catastrophes in this world, there's no, there hasn't been a really beginning or an end. It's been like this slow ramp up and it's not like, okay, this happened, now we can start healing. It's just this perpetual thing that we don't really know um, when it's gonna end and what to do. So, the skill, um, this is, so DBT people are big on this idea of radical acceptance. Um, and essentially it's, first of all, not hard to, that's not easy to do. Um, but the whole idea is accepting radically, they mean fully, uh, accepting life on life's terms, trying not to resist what you cannot change. Um, you know, pain is an inevitable part of life, but um, you can choose to think about it in certain ways, whereas suffering is a choice you make by keep focusing on what's the negative and not being able to shift your thinking about, okay, this happened, now what do I do? Um, fighting reality is exhausting and it doesn't, it doesn't work, right? Um, so I find this one to be the hardest to do because it takes a lot of practice, but what you could do is begin by recognizing the thought you're having, like, I can't believe this is happening. Um, and let it pass and replace statements of acceptance. It's a challenging situation and I know we will get through it. Um, one example for me that I've used in the past, it was a true story. I was on my way to my previous job. I used to work in, in Westport and I would commute to the city um, from the city every morning and it was like, you know, an hour drive. Um, and I was low on gas and I got into the gas station and I was kind of running late already for work and I didn't have my wallet. So I started panicking, I'm gonna be late for this meeting, I'm gonna be late for this meeting, um, I, I can't do this. And then I took a few deep breaths and I was just like, okay, this is what's gonna happen. It's, I'm not gonna make it, it's not the end of the world, I can't change it. And then suddenly I was able to kind of see my environment and I realized I was in Greenwich, I was at the Greenwich gas station and I realized my friend who I worked with probably didn't leave work yet. And she was able to run over, like throw me some cash and I got to work on time. So I, that just wasn't an example from my life where accepting the reality allows you to start problem solving to make it different. Hope that makes sense. Um, and then I said, has there been anything positive? And students um, being with family, uh, eating dinner together, and I like this one thing. I appreciate what I had before. So again, making meaning from a negative situation, realizing that this is probably going to end at some point, and we will go back in some form to the way we had it before. But being able to appreciate what you what you had. Um, so I thought I'd maybe just share what I'm doing. So and tie it to the different skills. You know, getting up, showering, eating breakfast, dinner, regular times, that's the police skills, which are again, tying your physical health to your emotional health, being able to regulate your emotions. Um, I know you can all relate when you're super tired, you might be more irritable, might be more likely to engage in maybe some negative 
interpersonal skills. Um, so, and then I'm also going for a long walk with the dog. We just got a dog in, in January. Um, and I've been trying to take a new route each time. This was actually something I picked up from something Bill Meyer said once. Um, trying to notice different features of the architecture. I live on the Upper West Side in Manhattan, and there's a lot of beautiful architecture that I'm slowly just opening my eyes to. I'm trying to be more mindful on these walks and put, silence my phone um, and really just take it all in, try to focus. And I've also started a regular group chat with high school friends I haven't talked to in a while. So that's, you know, interpersonal effectiveness, reaching out, um, keeping those connections going. Um, and then I don't know if you've heard or anybody's in the city now, but at 7 p.m. there's, um, I don't know how it got started, but there is this thing that everybody um, either grabs a pot or a claps out their window that's just saluting the police officers and the fire department, which happens, you probably hear it, it happens to be a fire department right across the street here. Um, and that's just felt really nice. You know, every seven, seven o'clock every night, there's cheering and there's shouting and there's banging on pots and it's just like a nice moment. Um, and there's a skill called contribute in the DBT framework, which is you know, doing something nice for somebody else can often help our own mood and help us feel um, lifted. And then I've also been sending, you know, like inspirational uplifting postcards or quick notes to my niece and nephew. And that's the, another idea of um, the contribute skill, another example of that. Um, and then I really like cooking, so just watching short cooking videos to either, you know, distract me from whatever's going on or all this is going on or rewarding myself after doing a chunk of work, giving a quick break as a reward. That's the whole behavior change thing again, accumulating positives. Um, and then this is the last slide, so I guess we didn't um, take as much time as we thought, Anne, but um, all of those skills are going to be posted in some form on our psychology website. We um, started it and the psychology interns who some of are, are, are here are wonderful and we're going in and we're adding mindfulness activities you can do at home with your family or yourself, uh, articles and resources. And then what I'd like to do is build sort of a skills corner, so to speak, so a separate page within the high school that will explain a little bit about more of these skills, give you more examples than I've done here. Um, and you can learn a little bit about what we, we're, we're teaching the students in school as well. So at this point, I think if you have questions, you can raise your hand um, and I can unmute you or you can put them in the chat box. I mean, one thing I'm already thinking as we, um, as we complete this presentation is that something almost the same as this can probably be presented to students because mm -hmm. um, all the things that Tom just talked about are relevant for students as well. We wanted to start with parents because it's been a complicated few weeks, but certainly these are all things we can tell students as well. So feel free to raise your hand if you'd like or type in a question if you have one. We just really wanted to create a space where people felt like maybe they could get a few tips to help manage, manage the, the time that we have so different than mm -hmm. what we normally have right now. Mm -hmm. Any questions, any feedback or thoughts people wanna share? Yeah, anything that you've been finding helpful that I didn't touch upon? Yeah, if anyone wants to share anything they're, they're doing. We are putting together a best of by the Bronxville High School faculty, just little things. Faculty mm -hmm. members recommend fun stuff. So I, I, we're going to share it before next week, but some people have shared recipes, podcasts they like, books, movies, just some fun things if kids are looking for something to do that they maybe they can take a look at one of their favorite teachers, little pages to find something new to try or do. All right, well, I appreciate everyone attending, Tom. Well, Thanks thank for your you. time sure. and your thoughts. Um, we will do this. We, we do have a time management meeting uh, scheduled, presentation scheduled on Thursday, so please feel free to attend that. And we will probably follow up, depending on how long our school closure goes, with more um, short presentations like this to help all of you. 
So thank you very much. Have a good evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, and um, hopefully we see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tom. You got it.